Hello everybody, and welcome to my first episode of Drawn to Life. Drawn to Life is a new series I am doing that will be telling a story about my life. But here is the catch. So I will be adding some fictitious parts to it to make it sound even crazier. And you guys, the audience, are going to have to decide what you think is fictitious and write it in the comments below. So, the cool thing about this is, for example, if we use the plot line of Stand By Me. So, I could be saying, we were walking down the train tracks and a train came, and that's truthful. But, when I twist it and say, I was walking down the train tracks and a train hit Steven and he fell off and died, now that's the fictitious part. So what you'd write in the comments below is, he didn't really get hit by the train, or he didn't die, and that will be saying the correct thing. If you said, oh, the train wasn't coming when you guys were on the railroad tracks, now that, that you wouldn't get the points for. But if you can spot all the fictitious things that happen in my videos and you can comment them all together down below, I will do a shout out to you guys in my next Drawn to Life video. So, without further ado, here is the first episode of Drawn to Life. Once upon a time, I lived in a place in Washington State called Pasco. This is a small town in a bigger town called the Tri-Cities. There was Kennewick to the left and Richland to the right. So, I used to live with my father and, uh, well, I lived with my grandparents who went to my father's house on the weekends. So, when I was on the in the weekends over there, I kind of got bored. So one day, I stumbled upon a basketball court with a whole bunch of people circled around in there. So they were all looking at something and I thought to myself, well, what, uh, what could they be doing over there? And they were all looking back at me and a question. I should mention the fact that I was white and everyone else in the place was Hispanic or black. Not that that matters, but they all kind of looked at me funny. One of them told me, if you want to join in, then you have to join in right now, white boy. So I thought to myself, what could it hurt? So I joined in and I looked and I saw people fighting and I thought to myself, well, I'll give it a shot. So I stood in a ring with everybody else and they were fighting. There was this one big grizzly guy who punched one of the other guys and knocked him out. That was the first time in person I had seen someone get knocked out and it was kind of shocking to me. So I was a little bit worried, but I had some martial arts ability and I thought to myself, well, I might be able to take this guy on. So I looked over and the guy was blocking, but he wasn't blocking in his normal average way. He had his arms spread out to the sides, not protecting his face at all. But I thought, well, maybe this is an interesting strategy. So here I was, my kind of swooping crane, nerdy looking figure. And here this other guy was with his arms out to his sides, not knowing what's going on. And he throws a punch at me. But being a ninja, I dodged to the side and was able to get away from his blow. And at this point, everyone was real impressed because for some reason, I guess, they were used to everyone getting hit all the time. So I was able to get behind him and actually start to put in kind of a choke hold on him. It's called the Mata Leon or the Rear Naked Choke. So after a few seconds, he was passed out on the ground and everyone was super impressed. And I was kind of celebrating over the top of him. And this happened a few times until I was able to knock out or subdue every one of the guys in the ring that fought me. After that, I, asked, I wanted to build a fort and they said to me, what are we gonna do next? So I told them, well, let's build a fort. And so they went and grabbed a whole bunch of lumber for us to build this fort. And we built this awesome fort up in a tree. And it was really cool because no one else could see it. It was up in the, tr up in the trees. We were thinking we were pretty cool. But then after that, these guys were like, well, we need a sign. And so I thought to myself, okay, well, I'll build a sign. And so I assembled this sign called AFB, or Alexander's Free Boys, my name being Alexander. And so I left, and then a few weeks later, I came back to visit my dad, and AFB was just like painted all over the fences, I guess spray painted. And I thought to myself, what the heck is happening here? So I knocked on my friend Robert and Gilbert's door, and they showed up to me saying like, Alex, what in the world? have you been doing? You uh, you haven't been here. What's going on? We've been running this shindig without you. And I thought to my, and I told them, I said, well, what do you mean? And he said, Robert said, oh, well, um, there's been 
a lot of activity lately and we need your help. So they showed me a crazy whole bunch of things and one of the things was in the garage there was like a whole bunch of drugs and stacks of money and it was super like breaking bad standing sitting on the stacks of money and I thought to myself what is going on here I, would, I just built a fort with these guys and we boxed well little did I know that they had actually inviting over who was going to be the leader of this gang so after that they showed me they showed me this guy named Mikolo who was actually kind of the enforcer of the group and was the leader of all the the fighters. Well, I was kind of freaked out by this, but I, I thought to myself, well, I need to act tough and act like I knew that this was happening. So I kind of played along. Shortly after that, I moved a huge distance, a humongous distance. We took a plane and we went all the way to Richland, which wasn't actually a big distance. It was kind of just right across the river. But it was kind of, I, I never went, I didn't go visit Pasco after that. And after a long time, I had told my friends about this story about how I was like the leader of this gang and nobody believed me. And I thought to myself, well, I guess I'll go back and, and see what's happening. So on my way back, I went to Burger King to go eat. And I was in the line there and I ordered some food. Well, that didn't cost me anything. And on the ticket it said AFB. And I was pretty shocked by that. So after a long time, I ended up being kind of unconnected from the gang, which is a great thing. I got away from them and I actually moved from Washington through Idaho, through Montana to a place called Gillette, Wyoming, which is about 18 hours drive away. So this has been Drawn to Life and I hope you guys enjoyed that. A few more things to mention really quickly. I... I don't support gang violence. I didn't know I was going to be part of this gang thing. And uh, since then, I'm pretty sure it's kind of been shut down. However, this has been the story of how I accidentally became the leader of a gang. I fought these gang members, I became their leader, and somehow they kept running without me. This guy named Gilbert and Robert, who used to be my friends, they ran it without me. And it kind of went off the rails hopefully. So anyway, can you guys spot what was truth and what was fiction there? I hope you can. Leave a comment below and let hey me guys, know. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video of Drawn to Life. It was a little bit crazy for the first video and there are a lot of truths in that and a few falsehoods as well. It's one of the craziest stories from my childhood, but I hope you guys enjoyed that and I hope you guys can figure out what is truth and what is not. If you do, I'll be able to post you in the as a shout out to my next video. So please post in the comments below what you guys think is the truth and what you guys think is false. So, as always, my name is Alcaplasm. This has been Drawn to Life. Have a fantastic day and see you in the next video.